Speaking of Labor Day, it usually marks the end of summer, yet we are still dealing with extreme heat, and we're also dealing with mosquitoes. And guess what? Both can kill you. There's no shortage of mosquito-borne diseases. West Nile virus, eastern equine encephalitis, malaria, dengue fever, the Orapush virus, also known as sloth virus. In fact, mosquito-borne illnesses are a real concern in parts of the country right now. One person in New Hampshire has died of Eastern Equine Encephalitis, or EEE. Three others in New England have been infected. Public health officials in the Northeast are warning about the risks, and they're urging people to take precautions when mosquitoes are out the most, which is between dusk and dawn. We're showing you a picture of Dr. Fauci. That's because the CDC also reporting there have been almost 290 cases of West Nile virus so far this year, including Dr. Fauci, who is briefly hospitalized with that virus. But the West Nile and EEE viruses, at least, a majority of those who get the viruses don't develop the disease. And that is good because there is no treatment for either of those. And 30% of those who get EEE die. We just mentioned sloth virus or sloth fever as a mosquito-borne illness. And now the CDC has issued a warning the disease has reached the United States and mosquitoes can spread it. It's called the sloth virus because the animals regularly become infected. And the virus is mostly found in areas where sloths live. It's now endemic in parts of South America. There's been 8,000 reported cases worldwide so far this year. And that is a huge surge from the 832 cases reported last year. With all these mosquito-borne diseases and potential illnesses, it is easy to get confused and it can be scary. So let's check in with America Tonight medical contributor, Dr. Omar Awan. Dr. Awan, how big of a problem are mosquito-borne diseases for the average person in the United States? Well, for the average person, Carolyn, it's not too much of a problem and that's good news. And the reason why is because if you take, for example, West Nile virus, the majority of us will not even have symptoms if we get the virus, right? So 80% of us will actually experience no symptoms, but you know, rarely about 20% of us will have symptoms. And it, they all present like flu-like symptoms. So things like you know, fever, headache, muscle aches, maybe vomiting, diarrhea, and even a, a rash if sometimes that's possible as well. So you know, overall, it's not a huge threat. There, there are thousands of cases that do occur every year. And in the case of Eastern equine encephalitis, this is much more rare, right? We're talking about maybe a handful of cases that occur in America every year. Now, of the mosquito-borne illnesses we listed earlier, which is the most serious in your opinion? Well, I think Eastern equine encephalitis is very serious because although very rare, we're talking about just, you know, maybe 10 or 11 cases that occur every year, uh, it can absolutely result in inflammation of the brain and inflammation of the membranes that surround the brain. And if you start to get uh, symptoms that affect the brain, so things like, you know, high fever, coma, seizures, even muscle paralysis, and even death, this can be very serious. And, you know, as you said, about a third of people who get symptoms that involve the brain end up dying, right? That's in contrast to West Nile virus where, you know, very few people die. You know, we're talking about, you know, less than 1% of people who get West Nile virus are going to die, but the rate is much higher for Eastern equine encephalitis. And we know that, you know, someone has died now in New Hampshire. So definitely of concern. Certainly of concern. Dr. Owan, um, I am someone who gets eaten alive. I, it doesn't matter what I do. I put on DEETS. I do all the oils and the essential oil. I get eaten alive. <laughs> Am I more at risk because of that? Are, are people who get bitten more, are we more at risk? Is there something about us that makes mosquitoes want to eat us? Well, I don't know necessarily, but I think the bottom line is that those who are older, those who have chronic medical conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, lung disease, they're more at risk of getting some of these infections. Uh, there's obviously common sense things that we can all do to help prevent us. Obviously, there are no uh, medicines that treat these viruses, and there's no vaccine that prevents these viruses. But we can do things like put on insect repellent, uh, wear long sleeve shirts, pants, and just, you know, limit our time outdoors, right? Because these mosquitoes are out from, as you said, you know, dawn to uh, to. So, you know, as long as we limit our time outside, uh, we can all do a better job of hopefully preventing mosquito bites that are the culprit and the cause for a lot of these mosquito-borne illnesses. Now, what are you most concerned about when you, when you see warnings that, that we are seeing from the CDC about things like the sloth virus or West Nile? 
the fact that these are increasing. You know, like if you talked about this 10 years ago or 15 years ago, we often didn't talk about these type of things. But now this is making headlines. And the reason for that is there's a lot of reasons why we're seeing more mosquito-borne illnesses. And part of it is climate change, right? So part of it is the fact that we're experiencing warmer temperatures. There's changes in rainfall. And this is allowing mosquitoes to survive longer for them to breed and for them to be sort of a fertile ground for them to infect us, quite frankly. And then also, you know, there's been globalization and travel right now. Many more people are able to come from different countries in South America, uh, Africa, and they bring along diseases, obviously, right? This is just a natural part of travel. So I think these are going to become more common as time goes on. So that's really what concerns me. Moving forward. Uh, this might be a silly question, but but why are certain areas impacted? Are there different mosquitoes in those areas that are impacted over the ones that aren't? There are. So, you know, if you take, for example, West Nile virus, it's pretty much impacting the majority of America. 33 states now have West Nile virus. But really, if you look at something like Triple E, Eastern Equine Encephalitis, it's really affecting sort of the Atlantic states, the Gulf states. There have been some reports in you know, states around the lakes like Michigan, but really it involves the Atlantic and the Gulf states. And that just has to do with the different species of mosquitoes that result in infection or that cause the infection. And they live in different areas or they're able to survive and thrive in different areas and temperatures. Is the best way to protect yourself still uh, using DEET? Yeah, and just common sense things, Carolyn, really just, you know, insect repellent, you know, whatever ones, you know, that the, you know, environmental, you know, protective agency recommends uh, and just wearing like covering yourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so, you know, just wearing, you know, long sleeve shirts, you know, pants, exactly what our mothers and our grandmothers tell us to do, uh, you know, limiting ourselves outdoors, maybe even having, you know, shields uh, for windows, you know, so that, sure. you know, when we open a window, mosquitoes aren't able to come to our houses or apartments, you know, all these, you know, very common sense things can really make a huge difference in, allowing us to prevent uh, mosquito-borne illnesses. America Tonight medical contributor, Dr. Omar Awan, thank you so much for your expertise, and I will try to not get bitten.